Hi, I'm Steven Feinberg, Executive Director of the Rhode Island Film and Television Office. Our guest tonight, Christian De Resendez, an award-winning filmmaker who does everything from documentaries to narratives, short films, and music videos. Christian, welcome to Double Feature. Thank you for having me. It's like you have done so much great stuff. I, I have to just declare, your film, uh, Raising Maddie Christian, is probably one of my favorite films of all time. Can you tell us a little bit about Maddie Christian and how that came to your, you know, to sure. your doorstep? Um, well, uh, years ago, I had a friend named Paul, uh, Paul Plotkin. Yeah. And Paul was um, had a job up in Norwood, and he was approached to uh, transfer a lot of old VHS tapes to DVD for this family. Sure. And he was watching this, and he said, by the way, you know, um, my son's on there. He doesn't have any arms and legs, just so you're not shocked. Um, that's what you're going to be seeing. And long story short, he saw it. He was so captivated by it. He's like, there's, there's a movie here. And over the course of about two years, it finally, he finally came back to me and said, I want you to meet their parents. And that's how that relationship started. And this was an inspiring story about a boy born with no arms or legs. Uh, the family had done all of these uh, videos and Super 8, the whole shebang. You mm -hmm. made it into... Um, a great film, uh, and it really showed about how nothing stopped him. He lived his life, and uh, I was just so moved by that film. It's just wonderful. Thank you. Um, and then you, you, right now you're working on a documentary on Slatersville. Can you yeah. talk about that a bit? Yeah, Slatersville is a very long-term project. Um, it's going to be a documentary in two parts. Um, it covers a 200-year story. Um, of the first industrialized mill village in the United States located in North Smithfield. Um, and so we've been scouring the globe basically looking for stuff that a lot of historians haven't seen, um, just finding whatever we can to tell the story. Yeah. Um, to date, since 2012, we've shot about over 80 interviews. Wow. Um, eight of those people have passed away. Um, we've scanned well over 6,000 images. Um, it's just an enormous, enormous project. So you so. started out, you were going to do, uh, it was going to be one part. Yeah. Then you had so much material. The, how long is the well, it's, two it's parts? Well, it's not so much, uh, well, part of it is about having a lot of material. But really it's about the two story arcs. Because if you're covering, covering 220 years of history, you're not going to do it all in one, right. you know, unless you're like, that happened there, that happened there in the end, you know. Right. Um, so there, there are the story arcs. There's the era of Slater's, uh, Slater ownership, and then between 1900 and 1915, it sh completely shifts into a different story. And so this whole, you have this giant arc, but then you have arcs within that arc. Right. So that's how... You know. So do you prefer to do documentaries or narratives or short films or feature films? Your it, passion? it shifts because I love documentaries mm -hmm. um, and because there's a naturalism, there's a, there's a reality to documentaries that I love. And I love the idea and the challenge of getting material and then sculpting it into a unique looking narrative. Um, but I've always started out wanting to do narratives <laughs> right, right. and so like I've always kind of fought to do those like I did a, I directed a feature back in 2001 um, but then after that you know I I tried to do shorts and like we were saying a moment ago that there's the godfather line right, it's right. like I remember around 2004 I was saying I'm not going to do any more Document documentaries at least for a while and then suddenly I got involved in a big documentary so it, it you're so good at it you're so good uh, at it thank you and then you did um a short film, was it called uh, Fred and Emil? Yeah, Fred and Emil. It's another short documentary. Um, it's about uh, a gay couple living in Lowell, Massachusetts, and what they have gone through in, in their lives, in their 80s, and looking back. And oh, that, they're seeing that whole, how, how, how America has changed. Right. It's a very simple piece. It's these two yeah. older men talking about what they've done and how they were so... Um, present in the whole um, mass equality alliance yeah. uh, movement for gay marriage up there. But um, it is 25 minutes long and it's coupled with another short film that I did back in 2013 called Memories for Sale about a similar topic, yeah. uh, which is also 25 minutes based on a one act play by Jerry Bizantz. Yeah. So um, the two films are meant to act like sister movies. Oh, excellent. And now you're doing these films. You're also uh, 
uh, doing music videos. Mm -hmm. I, I see, I've seen some of your music videos, which are terrific. How um, how do you pick what you're going to do? And also, you have a family. You've got a wife and a, and a child. Like, how do you <laughs> how do you manage like having a career and then these passion projects that take maybe four years to do? How do you do all that? I remember seeing an interview with Paul Newman years ago, or somebody asked him the same question about his long-term marriage. He says said it was impossible then, and it's impossible now, and it will always be impossible. <laughs> kind of. That pretty much right. is it. Uh, but as far as like what um, grabs, something really has to grab me. Right. Like I really have to have an idea. Like the first time I saw footage of Matty Christian running on the beach, I knew, this is yes, I have to do something right. with this. And thankfully that occurred. Yeah. Um, and so an idea really has to grab me. You know, you really have to be able to throw it to the wall and it has to stick yeah. really hard. And um, you're marrying this uh, yeah. pro you're married to this project for about three years sometimes. Yeah, well, Maddie Christian took a little over two years. Yeah. Um, Slidersville has taken several years yeah. uh, on and off. So, what about um, for those who are watching? Any advice for young filmmakers? Anything you want to share with them? Well, actually, yeah. Um, as far as doing documentaries compared to narratives. There are a lot of people that can do narratives that can't, well, let me reverse that. There are a lot of people who can do documentaries that can do narratives, but people who do narratives don't often like to do documentaries. Yeah. So, and it's because you're able, you have um, a little bit more of a training on how to shift reality and, and work with certain things that narrative filmmakers normally don't. Yeah. You kind of go in with the script all prepared, whereas docs are like, okay, give it to me, now I have to sculpt something into it, and then that makes this over here easier. Yep. So um, I think if you're going to go into narratives, for example, it's really good that you have some documentary experience yep. so you can learn how to figure that out. Yep. Um, as far as just generally yeah. overall, I mean, just just go do it. That's the only way. It, if you are a filmmaker, a filmmaker gets up in the morning and makes film, and that's, that's what they film. do. So you have well, to go Christian. and do it. I want to thank you so much for coming to Double Feature. I can't wait to see what you're doing next, and I'm a big fan of the work that you've done so far. So thank you so much. Thank you very much.